seagrasses are declining worldwide at rates faster than coral reefs and rainforests, but, at, but we do overlook them. We don't talk about seagrass loss nearly enough. Seagrass is a land-based plant that colonized the ocean. The blades can be over a meter tall, so when you dive down or snorkel down into the seagrass bed, you can kind of get lost in it, really. They are often considered nursery grounds. So that means that they provide habitat, both food and refuge for small critters. Seagrass is a really important habitat for an entire food web. And they're incredibly diverse. Think of an area of seagrass that's about as big as a basketball. When we collect that seagrass and, and look at it very carefully, we find between five and 20 different species living on the seagrass. The animals move among the meadows. So what this means, if we wanted to manage or protect or conserve uh, the biodiversity of a seagrass meadow, we couldn't just protect a single meadow. We would need to recognize that the animals that live in that meadow are being sustained by their populations in meadows that may be a few kilometers away or, or even farther. So our larger scale plans are to understand the entire food web in seagrass systems and drivers of change to these systems. Worldwide, the major threats are nutrient pollution and habitat destruction. When we build structures on the shoreline, whether they're docks or marinas or seawalls, that often changes the oceanography in such ways that seagrasses can't persist. Getting a sense of what we have here and the factors that are affecting change currently and into the future is really important for understanding how to respond to these development pressures and how to mitigate change in these important habitats going forward.